Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Ultimate Bucket List. I'm wearing my Manchester United shirt. Let's go annoy some people in Liverpool. <laughs> Liverpool and Everton. Two giants of English football. These clubs are situated less than a mile apart from each other. And there's no rhyme or reason as to why you would pick one team over another. But one thing's for certain, neither team likes Manchester United, especially Liverpool. So going around the place wearing a United shirt is a really stupid idea. Boy, I've been getting some weird glares already, but uh, all right, let's get this over and done with. Wow, that was quick, got turned away already. Not for wearing the shirt, of course, but apparently they're doing some filming inside the stadium. So rather than wait until 3 in the afternoon for the first tour of the day, I decided to walk through Stanley Park to visit the other football ground. Goodison Park. This is home to Everton, the blue half of the city. Colloquially known as the People's Club and Goodison Park has been their home for over a hundred years. And it's really starting to show. So when you come here to Everton, you'll quickly realize a couple of things. Number one, you slap bang in the middle of a housing estate. And number two, this place is seriously old. I must admit, I've been here before many years ago. And to be honest, nothing really has changed. Literally nothing. The tour actually begins in the club's reception. You get marched up a flight of stairs up to the Dixie Dean Suite. Now, apparently, this used to be the trophy room, but I'm guessing they didn't win many trophies. So, yeah, they converted it into a corporate hospitality lounge. You get a really, really, really long talk, especially about Dixie Dean, arguably their best player. And yes, this does go on for a while, so bear with them. But once that's over and done with, they march you out onto the stands. Now, the director's box here is probably the best view you're going to get. And Goodison Park has a very ethereal old world charm to it that you just can't quite describe. I don't know if it's the architecture or the beams, but there's something magical about this place. The best way to take photos is right up here above the director's box. This is Lil. She was actually very lovely, but she won't hesitate to tell you what things that Everton did first. Um, scored the quickest goal in the FA Cup final. First football club to be televised in 1936 against Arsenal. First football club to reach 7,000 games in top flight football. First to reach 4,500 games. Yeah, this actually goes on for a while. So, once you've had a rousing talk from Lil, you get to see a few little other bits before walking through the media bits and into the dressing rooms, where you'll receive the biggest shock of your life mainly because the away team's dressing room is a complete dump. This is possibly the worst Premier League dressing room I've ever been to, and apparently the showers don't even work in this place, which I'm not really surprised at that. The home team's dressing room isn't that much better, admittedly. You do get some cool photo opportunities with your favourite players, but overall, the place is rather basic and the facilities are rather spartan. There is, however, a replica FA Cup for you to take photos with, so that's pretty cool. If you are indeed an Everton fan, one of the cooler experiences is to walk down the players' tunnel. And when you do this, the theme of Zed Cars, which is Everton's anthem, it plays whilst you're walking out of the tunnel. So, imagine this. Take lots of pictures down at pitch level, guys, because this is one of the better views of the stadium you're probably going to get. So take lots of videos, take lots of pictures, because you're not here for very long. After that, they march you down the side of the stadium into the media area. This is where all the press conferences take place. This will provide you some cool photo opportunities, and believe it or not, the microphones are live. Yes. We are very happy that we've been to the football club 4 0 today. No, I am actually the manager of Manchester United. And that, believe it or not, is the end of your tour. 
If you do want some souvenirs, I highly recommend going to the club shop situated across the street. And it's a pretty sizable gift shop, so yeah, pretty cool. So guys, I've just finished the stadium tour at Everton, just over there. And I gotta be honest, it's a really old building and it really shows. And in terms of things to see, really not that much. I mean, I kind of expected more um, being a historic football club, but obviously they can't really show any trophies because they've barely won any. And they need to move into that new stadium as quick as humanly possible, because that isn't worthy of a proud football club like Everton. But you know what? The people were absolutely amazing. They were so friendly. They answered all your questions. Um, I gotta admit, they were probably the most down-to-earth Liverpoolians I've ever met. <sighs> right, it's time to go over there. Back to the cauldron of hate. Anfield, the home of the red half of the city. One of Europe's most successful teams, they moved into Anfield, which used to belong to Everton, and have turned it into an absolute fortress. From their club slogan, you'll never walk alone, emblazed on their gates, to the cop where all the hardened, bloodthirsty fans sit. And this place is considered by many to be hallowed ground, and you can even be married here. You know, if you want to. And as soon as I walked in, it was noticed that I'm an outsider. Oh yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> By the way, let me show you how both clubs treat Manchester United fans. Get out. What? Out. What? Get out. I, I, seriously, you're kicking me out? Man United's out. Sorry now. Oh. What? What's this? It's a quality garment. <laughs> Such a warm welcome you get here at Anfield. Anyway, this lady right here, she's actually a Manchester United fan as well. But clearly she's not stupid enough to wear a United shirt at the home of the hated enemy. Not like me anyway. The tour actually begins by going up quite a lot of stairs and starting at the top level. There is a lot of people here today. You get informational talks as to the heritage of Liverpool Football Club and their greatest managers. And it's actually quite interesting, although having said that, I think I might just stand over here just in case. The staff here like to play a cool game. It's called Shame the United Fan. So this gentleman has come all the way from Manchester. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, the yeah, you get a cool video presentation specifically by Jurgen Klopp, the current manager, which was actually kind of cool. And then you get to see the pitch for the first time. And the views out here are pretty impressive. Take lots of pictures here, guys, because this is quite an imposing stadium. Now, you also get this cool guide, which is kind of like a virtual reality thing whereby you can experience the sights and sounds of Anfield on match days, which is kind of cool. After a bit of Everton shaming, you go into the Carlsberg Lounge. Now, this is one of the nicest lounges I've ever been in. It's really, really swanky, and you can actually come here by invitation only. So, you then get to walk past the media bits, where you get some cool photo opportunities, into the away team's dressing room, which, believe it or not, was actually nicer than Everton's home dressing room. It's fairly basic, it's nothing special, but it's actually quite decent. Nothing compared to the home dressing room, however, which is, as you can imagine, really, really fancy. Now, it gets pretty crowded in here, so yeah, be sure to take lots of pictures when you can, and if at all possible, either leave it to the end or right at the beginning. Here's me just getting in the way of people's photos. I'm starting to suspect that there's holes being burned in the back of my head right now. But anyway, you then get to walk out to the player's tunnel, and they invite you to touch the famous This Is Anfield sign. You know, just in case you completely forgot where you were. But anyway, walking out into the tunnel is actually kind of cool. 
and you get the best photo opportunities from down here on pitch side. Take lots of pictures and videos here guys. You can take pictures and videos of the stands, the dugout seats, and you know what, it's actually kind of a cool place to just chillax, etc. And don't be a dick guys, help each other take photos, it makes everyone's experience a lot better. Now at this point, I gotta say a word about our tour guide Gordon, which is this guy right here. I've been to a lot of stadium tours, but this guy is probably one of the most enthusiastic ones I've ever seen. Very knowledgeable, very talkative, and clearly very, very good at his job. In fact, I'll go as far as to say that he's probably one of the best I've ever seen. So if you do get Gordon on your tour, consider yourselves very, very lucky. Anyway, no tour of Liverpool is complete without going to the COP. This is the stand where all the hardened, bloodthirsty fans sit, and they can affect games by themselves. After visiting the COP, unfortunately, that's the end of your tour, you get let out of the side door, where you can proceed to go into the Liverpool shop, the museum, or the boot room cafe. So, just come out of Liverpool's tour, and to be honest, actually quite good. The Liverpool shop is, quite frankly, mega huge. By the way, check out these guys' reactions to my shirt behind me. Oh dear. The boot room is a Liverpool-themed restaurant, and do you know what? It's actually a decent place to eat, and the prices are actually quite reasonable. The museum is right next to the boot room, and this is where I met these two lovely ladies. Uh, am I going to find any Premier League trophies here? Yeah. Haha, <laughs> I don't think so. But the museum itself is actually pretty cool. You get to learn a lot about the players, you get to see all of Steven Gerrard's stuff, which is actually kind of cool, and get a picture taken with a replica European Cup. Speaking of which, all five European Cups are proudly on display here at Liverpool, especially this one in the middle, which was worn by Manchester United in 1999 and is now permanently on display here in Liverpool. And I paid money to see this. <sighs> Sickening. But overall, the museum is definitely worth it. It's definitely worth it as part of the price of admission. Okay, Nid, I'm sold. What do I do? Well, you need to come here to the Stanley Park area of Liverpool. Now, admittedly, it's nowhere near the centre of Liverpool. So the best thing to do is actually drive. And there is actually a car park that you can park on when there is no matches on for free. It's called the Stanley Park Car Park and is situated in the shadow of Anfield. If you're not driving, the best thing to do is actually go to one of the two near train stations, which is not near Liverpool, or take a bus service or spend half an hour walking to the stadiums. Cost of the tours, not too bad. The Liverpool tour is more expensive at £20, but you do get entrance to the museum for that price. Everton's was 15 quid and you didn't really get that much, so yeah. Is there anything else I need to know? Yes, unlike any other stadium tours I've been to, they are happy to let you video and take as many pictures as you like, but it is a tour and they don't hang around each spot forever. So if I were you, if you want the best pictures, literally be at the front of the queue, be at the front of the pack, and I guarantee that you'll get the decent shots and the decent videos to go along with it. And also, if you're going to be a dick and wear the shirt of your arch rivals, you're gonna get ribbed quite a lot. So Nin, if I had a choice, if I could only do one tour, either go to Liverpool or Everton, which one would it be? Liverpool by a mile. Not only is this place bigger and more modern, but the tour was just better. Um, it was better quality, it was longer, and for the extra five pounds you get access to their museum, no Premier League trophies in it yet, but you know, it was actually worth the price of admission. Everton, well, I hope for their sake that they move into their new stadium sometime soon, because Goodison Park, it's in better days, and to be honest, is really not befitting of a football club of that stature. Okay then, Smartos, which would you rather go to? Everton or City? City, easy. How about United or Liverpool? Ah, <sighs> Liverpool. I'm not kidding. Not only was the stadium actually a little bit nicer than Old Trafford to walk around in, 
but the tour was much much better and yeah if you had to choose just one stadium to go to uh, actually go to Liverpool where does Liverpool and Everton stack up in the hierarchy of stadiums well kind of like this yeah Liverpool's actually quite near the top I wouldn't say it's better than the tour I did of Porto which you can find the video there but it's definitely one of the better stadiums that I've actually been to Everton's unfortunately one of the worst but some of the nicest people so at least they've got that going for them if you have enjoyed this episode please be sure to like share and subscribe comment on the comment section below and if you've got any other bucket list ideas or any other stupid crazy ideas to do leave me a comment fire me a tweet yeah tweet at me and if i get enough suggestions i will go ahead and do that so guys thank you very much for watching from the cauldron of hatred we'll see you in the next episode when was the last time you guys won this was it 95 95 yeah <laughs> Okay, against nice. you yeah. thank you yeah. thank you very much I apologize. that's right you've got on a video now yeah. so that's yeah. pretty shame everybody on YouTube yeah. for my lack of knowledge <laughs> look at it hey look at this Ever yeah. Everton and United Everton yeah I've just been to Everton oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, my don't know how to go on no, you <laughs> <are so laughs>